It's been charging all night and it won't turn on. Ah! Bitter Epic here. Um, after a fair amount of pain, I finally do have a working Pine Phone Pro. Using Posh, um, I'm going to demonstrate the basics of getting that going today. It did take a little bit of pain, it did take a little bit of reading, but I will get guide you through it and help you to get there. Probably the most important thing to understand is that the, the wiki page for the PinePhone Pro is going to tell you everything you need to get yourself started. If you don't read it, you're not going to know what to do, and you're going to be searching all these random places and forums to get there. Start there, get yourself installed, and follow some of the steps, and your phone will work. It'll boot, and it's still not perfect, but it's definitely usable now. In my future videos, I'll detail about installing applications. I'll tell you some more about what it comes with, um, so you can figure out once you get to step one, where you can go from there. Now, there's some interesting bugs when charging your Pine Phone Pro that I hit, and I learned the hard way. The battery, um, it does not charge when it's off right now. It might be fixed now, but I need to update my firmware again. It uses a lot of power, and um, once it's fully dead, you have to go through the recovery process, which I'll be detailing a little bit later before jumping into the installation. Pine64 also sells an external charger, which is right here if you're interested in it. Um, that can help you to charge even when the phone is dead, but if it's fully dead, apparently you still de do need to go through the recovery process on the Pine Phone page. They actually have steps on it in the wiki, um, and I'll be guiding you through those slowly. And as a side note, the Pine Phone Pro also comes with a hilarious README. Some of the interesting notes are the, about the power management, which details some of the issues, uh, about firmware, and a very interesting one is that the camera actually does not have working drivers right now. So that explains why there's no camera app to start with. Uh, boot order EMMC, blah, 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 blah. Now, there are a few things you should keep in mind when charging your Pine Phone Pro. If you have a one amp charger, it's not gonna be enough to charge it more than it's using power. If you have two, it will usually be charging more than it's losing power. Uh, if you're playing a video that uses does not use hardware encoding, it might actually slowly zap the energy. Three amps is going to be what you ideally want. I currently only use two, but you want to be looking on Amazon and a few different places for this. Charging is the most complicated thing with the, the Pine Phone Pro. I'm gonna run you quickly through what the recovery process looks like if your phone won't boot. Um, it basically, sh when you hit the RE button, it shorts it so that um, it can charge regardless of being off. The RE button is right here. The order that you do this is very important. You're gonna be un taking out the battery. You don't really want the SD card to be in there. Next, you will hold down the button. Make sure you plug in your USB cable into a computer. Keep in mind, you should not plug this into a laptop. Uh, it won't be able to supply enough power for it to charge. It'll give an error and then it won't give it any juice. It's recommended you plug this into a normal desktop computer like I ended up having to after about my third try. So plug this into a computer. <clears throat> Next, hold down the RE button with a pen or something like that. Plug in your battery. Plug in your USB cable. Wait about one, two, three seconds and then let go. What will end up happening now is if you're on Windows, this will show up as an unknown device and it will be charging. On Mac OS or Linux, it will show up as a Rockwell chipset so you know that it's actually plugged in correctly then you just have to leave this for a couple hours. It will eventually boot, even if it doesn't start immediately. 
if you hit the power button, no, sorry, the power button on this side, if you hit the power button, you'll have to go through this whole process again of, of uh, unplugging everything, hitting the RE button, and then plugging it back in. And then eventually you have a working phone. All right, it's been a few hours. Let's see if it works. What? <laughs> <laughs> it charged! It charged! I haven't been able to use this for like a week. <laughs> All right, let's start with installing Posh. If you do a quick search, you will quickly find the software releases on the Pine64 page. They'll link you to a bunch of different distros, and I'm going to be going for the ARM Linux distro. Um, Dink, dink mix. And okay, no, no page here, but free software, that's expected. Okay, let's go to the GitHub releases. And here's a bunch of general readme documentation. Um, they'll give you some information like passwords, they'll give you a couple different links. There are a bunch of different uh, versions of this, um, some with KDE at, at the center, bare bones a posh release, and uh, releases for different versions. All right, let's download the posh Pine Phone Pro image. It is almost 900 megabytes, which is large, but not too incredibly large. We'll wait for this as Firefox downloads and read the in installation instructions. You're gonna be doing DD to do this, just like in traditional sense. The Samsung Evo Plus is the most recommended SD card to be used for this. Um, the reason is, you don't want to get too new of an SD card because the speed won't make a difference. The Samsung Evo Pro Plus also apparently has the fastest read-write speed. SD compared to the internal memory is slower, but for initial setup and because of bugs in the firmware, this is really the only way to go. All right, let's get this plugged in. And there we go. Now the image is downloaded. I'm going to decompress it using XZ. I'm doing this on macOS, so I had to install a bunch of this software using Brew. This is not a tar archive, archive so you don't need to use tar. Now let's use DD from uh, macOS. It's a little bit different than it is on Linux. You'll do the disk list command to find the right device. And then DD requires a lowercase m for the BS, for the byte size, or block size. There we go. Pseudo, haha, <laughs> make me a sandwich. And this will take a while. You might want to come back within about 30 minutes to an hour. And there you have it, a flashed SD card. This is the start. Once you put this into your phone, it should boot off automatically. All right, let's take a look at what this looks like when it's booting. Do we have a booting phone? Give that a few minutes, and boom. Now the screen, the default passcode is one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have a working phone. Because of the bugs in the firmware, the very first thing we're gonna want to do is remove U-Boot from the internal firmware on the EMMC. That will make it so that when after it suspends, it'll be able to come back out of suspend correctly. Without it, you'll basically have a phone that Freezes, I guess you could say. Alright, so going to the Pine Wiki. The very first thing you'll want to do is use DD to remove the U boot. I do not believe using the partition manager included will do anything useful. You have to literally zero it out. So let's go to the terminal. We're going to use DD. DD in file. Let's make 
sure this is correct. DD in file is dev zero, out file dev mmc blp2. Okay, and I need sudo on this. Take a second, password, one, two, three, four, five, six, and boom. Now, if you reboot, you should be off of U-boot, and it should no longer have suspend problems. Your phone will now work like a normal phone. Restart. There we go. Not too bad, right? This is Posh on Dinked Nix. I have it working. It's my primary phone. I'm going to be starting to install some software on it, de detailing the different issues I have going through that. Anyways, bitter out. <laughs>